And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Celebrate this special season by worshiping our Savior and King as we bring you Christmas with Billy Blackwood. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. By highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold Him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn Oh, 
Well, you've probably never heard angels we have heard on high quite like that, but I promise you won't forget it. You know, we get that story from Luke's gospel. Uh, he tells the story of Christ's birth. And I'm just going to read that. And uh, you can follow along with me in Luke chapter 2 if you want to. Uh, it's interesting to me how the news was disseminated that night, how the shepherds knew, the, the angels knew, the wise men knew, and uh, obviously Mary knew. But we read that story and we find that God was up to something very miraculous. Uh, in Luke chapter 2, it reads, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. 
And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a great host with the angel, a multitude singing and praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You know, we have such a treasure of carols, of Christmas carols, to tell the story of Christ's birth. Most of us have grown up singing them. Uh, I wonder if we've thought about, you know, the songs that, that were born that night. Obviously, uh, the song we just sang, Angels We Have Heard on High, sweetly singing over the plain, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo, which is Latin for glory to God in the highest. And the songs that have been written since that night, to tell the story, there are hundreds of them, all sharing a facet of that beautiful old story of that first Christmas night, that first Noel. Uh, this is one of my favorite old carols. I hope you enjoy it too. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they Yeah. 
solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing and he beneath life's crushing load whose forms are bending low who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow look now for glad By prophets seen of old, when with the ever circling years shall come the time for when the new heaven and earth. Shall own the prince of peace, their king, and the whole world send back the song which now the angels see. I love those old songs. I hope you love them as much as I do. You know, I've actually written a few Christmas songs, and, and they're all kind of around the same theme. Um, they talk about what Christmas really is. You know, the world seems to be focused on Santa Claus and on reindeer and on Frosty the Snowman and, uh, you know, whatever else, but the real thing. And the real thing is Jesus. Uh, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. And I want to do a couple songs for you that... Uh, that talk about that very subject and drive the point home. This first one, uh, uh, you know, as you're sitting there in wherever you are right now, wherever you're watching, uh, probably no one's watching you, okay? So you can just join right in and sing along on this. It doesn't matter how you sound. We're not going to mic you. We're not going to tell anybody, okay? This will just be our secret. But I want you to help me sing along on this. This little chorus talks about what Christmas really is, and it goes like this. The Christ in Christmas is Jesus the glow in glory is Jesus. He's the holy in holiday, the prince of peace every day. The Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Okay, have you got that? Can we do that one more time? The Christ in Christmas is Jesus. The glow in glory is Jesus. He's the holy in holiday, the prince of peace every day. The Christ in Christmas is Jesus, a long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, a star shone bright in the heavens over where the baby slept. But the star of the show wasn't in the sky on that first Christmas night. The baby boy in the manger was the one who created the light. Oh, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus, the glow and glory is 
Jesus, he's the holy in holiday, the Prince of Peace every day, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Today there are those who still don't know who the holy Christ child is. We celebrate the holiday spirit without realizing it is. But the star of the show isn't Santa Claus or his ruby nosed reindeer. Jesus is the Christ of Christmas, and he's the reason the season is here. Oh, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus, the glory and glory is Jesus. He's the holy in holiday, the Prince of Peace every day, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Oh, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus, the glory and glory is Jesus, he's the holy in holiday, the Prince of Peace every day, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Yes, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Yes, the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. Wow, you sounded really good singing that. I'm kidding, I can't hear you, but you really did, I'm sure. I hope you know that Jesus is the reason for the season. A lot of us have heard that phrase, and we realize that that the Christ in Christmas is Jesus. He's really what the season is all about. Well, this is another one of my songs, and it's about that same uh, topic, and it's called Jesus is the Reason for the Season. Hope you enjoy it. At the center of time stands a manger a man and his wife, a baby boy. Though the world had no room for this baby, the stranger he came to make room for us. of his story how God in his love became a man how he willingly gave his power his glory that we might become like him oh jesus is the reason for the season jesus is the reason for the season though years have come and years have gone God's gift of love lives on and on. Yes, Jesus is the reason for the season. There's a thrill in the air each December. As families come from far and near, there's a joy in our hearts as we stop to remember the reason the seasons here. Oh, Jesus is the reason for the season yes jesus is the reason for the season though years have come and years have gone god's gift of love lives on and on yes jesus is the reason for the season though years have come and 
years have gone, God's gift of love lives on and on. Yes, Jesus is the reason for the
You know that night in Bethlehem was a light was a night like no other. I I I sometimes wonder what the angels must have been thinking. The angels had been in the presence of God since time eternal. They had worshipped the Lord. They had intimate fellowship, if you can, if you will, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And now, all of a sudden, for the first time from eternity past, something was getting ready to happen that they just really couldn't quite understand. God, <laughs> the Son, was going to become a human baby. Think about that. Think about that. You know, I, I guess the picture I get in my mind, and maybe this is just me, I, I can't really support this necessarily from Scripture, but just for me, I get a picture of, of the angels just kind of leaning over the balconies of heaven, <laughs> holding their breath, waiting to witness what was about to happen. You know, as a kid, like most kids, uh, we anticipate Christmas morning. We, we rush to the living room or wherever the tree is set up and the presents are, and we rip open the presents, and we, you know, we want to see what we got and some new toy or new doll or whatever it is. And, and we just we take such delight in unpackaging and ripping the bows off and the paper off and getting the box open and seeing what's in there. And the anticipation of all of that is part and parcel to Christmas. Because I think maybe that's exactly what the angels were doing that silent night, that holy night, is they were watching as the bow and the paper, if you will, the packaging came off and the gift of God was born as a baby as a baby, a helpless human baby, the king of the universe, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, becoming a helpless human baby, clothed with our humanity, clothed with our frailty, clothed with our weakness. You know, theologians and common people for 2,000 years have tried to tried to wrap their minds around the magnitude of the incarnation. And it's probably futile. You know, we're a finite mind trying to comprehend the infinite mind of God. That God <laughs> would become a helpless human baby. You know, that night, I'm sure, I, I, well, I'm saying I'm sure, I don't know what understanding the angels had, but they were probably just in absolute awe as they watched Jesus born of a virgin. I love the old hymns that are written particularly about that night, like that one, Silent Night, Holy Night. Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. What great words. Because you know that was really the whole point of Christmas. That was really the whole point is God's redeeming grace because we were all, face it folks, we were all helpless and hopeless. We were all bound for an eternity apart from God, separated from Him, lost in our sin. But God had a plan. From before the foundation of the world, God had a plan. His plan was to come Himself and to live a sinless life in our place. To die an atoning death in our place. To pay our sin debt in full. And to rise again on the third day. To live the life that we couldn't live. To pay the debt we couldn't pay. 
That's what the silent holy night was all about. God's redeeming grace. He redeemed you and he redeemed me. Those of us who've placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross are redeemed, bought back from our sin and the, the punishment, the consequences. We're bought back. We're redeemed by God's redeeming grace. His grace giving us what we don't deserve. I love to say God's grace is God giving us what we don't deserve and His mercy is withholding what we do deserve. And maybe you've never thought of it, but grace can also be an acronym, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what the cross is all about. That's what Christmas is all about because we couldn't have had the cross if we hadn't had Christmas. So that silent night, that holy night, the Son of God loves pure light became a baby in a manger. And as I sang the song earlier that I wrote, The Christ in Christmas is Jesus, the baby boy in the manger was the one who created the star that night that shone so brightly that it guided wise men from scholars believe thousands of miles away and led them eventually to the place where Jesus was that they might bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know, that's really what we're called to do. That's really our purpose. If you want to know what God's purpose for your life is, ultimately, our purpose is to worship Him, just to give Him glory with our lives, with our time, with our talent, with our gifts, with who, all that we are, to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, the angels are still worshiping him, and we have an opportunity as believers in Christ to worship him every day. There's another song that talks about that night that is just another fabulous song, a great lyric, and a powerful message. And it takes this a step further. Not only does it tell the story of that holy night, but it takes it a step further in Proclaiming the gospel which says, not only are we to love the Lord, but we are to love each other. And, and the second verse of this song was written at a time when there was a lot of tension in our country. There's tension in our country today. And these words are never more applicable than they are today. And I hope you will listen and apply them to your heart and your life and your relationships. And in so doing that your light will so shine before men that they will give God glory and you will be a worshiper of the Most High God. Listen. are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn was born all night oh holy night oh night
us to love one another. His law is love, and His gospel is peace. Chains shall He break, for the slave is our brother, and in His name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we with all our hearts. We praise His holy name. Christ is the On that first Christmas, 2,000 years ago, shepherds came from the fields in response to the call of the angel of the Lord, and wise men from the east began a journey following a star that would ultimately lead them to the Christ child, the Messiah. Today, the call still goes out to all who would be faithful. Come and behold him, born the king of angels, Come, let us adore Him. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. That's the call to us today. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come.
Jesus, to Thee be all glory give. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore Him. to adore him because he came he came as the word of the father in flesh appearing he came to be Emmanuel God with us he came taking on the form of a servant humbling himself becoming obedient unto death even the death of the cross because he came we can know the father because he came, we can have everlasting life. And because he came, we can celebrate who we are in him and who he is in us. There is joy because he came. Praise the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. And heaven and nature see, and heaven and nature see, and heaven and heaven and nature see. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. All fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat. Repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to Seems known far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the name. And wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. His love. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for His unspeakable gift. You know, being a part of the body of Christ affords us the opportunity of being in relationship with precious brothers and sisters who are a blessing to know. One such person in my life is a friend of mine named Bill. In 1999, he wrote this following little piece that instantly became one of my favorite, uh, my favorite Christmas readings. And I share it in hopes that it will minister to you 
as much as it has me. It begins with a Christmas story, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Bill writes, you know, God has an amazing way of choosing the undesirable things of earth and placing his beauty there. The presence of God changes our perceptions. It opens our eyes from the physical into the spiritual. It illuminates our vision. God takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. The natural supernatural, the worthless, priceless. So it was that first night in Bethlehem. Only the God of the universe would have chosen a manger as the place to bring his son into the world. A feeding trough for Mary and Joseph to lay the word made flesh. Certainly not a place of splendor or a palace for a king. You know, for many people that night, that night, their thoughts were anywhere but directed towards a stable in Bethlehem. How different today. Now nativities are found in homes or front yards of families right in your neighborhood. The manger today has been transformed into a thing of beauty and holiness. But the beauty of the manger isn't because of what it is. <laughs> no, it's because of who resided there. When we see the manger, we see Jesus. And he makes it beautiful. Far from the material extravagance of Christmas today, the first Christmas was born of humility. And humility is the great extravagance, even to the death on the cross. That first night probably found many people staring down wrong paths and dead-end streets. But I have a feeling that on that same night, all of heaven had their eyes fixed on a tiny manger. Outside, the atmosphere may have been noisy, but I wonder if all heaven was suddenly silenced as the Son of God came forth from the womb of a virgin. There were no scents of cinnamon or potpourri that evening, but surely Mary and Joseph breathed the very fragrance of God as they cradled the Savior in their arms. No sparkling lights hung from the exterior of that little manger, but the light of the world filled the interior. And though there would be no decorated Christmas tree in the corner, God would choose another tree for his son, the cross. The manger seems such an unfitting place for God to have chosen for his only son. And yet, even today, God still looks to place his beauty in undesirable places. Dirty and unlovely mangers that now take the form of you and me. You see, it's the love of God to look down from heaven and say, there's another manger, and I, I want to dwell there too. And, and, and there's an another, and there's, there's another. And so he knocks to see if we will let him in. And if we do, he takes our manger, and he transforms it. And over time, it becomes a beautiful and a holy thing. But the beauty of our manger is not because of what we are, but because of who resides in us. 
And I pray that when others see our manger, they will see Jesus. For he alone can make a manger beautiful. You know, I mentioned earlier that our destiny, our purpose is to worship him. We sang a little chorus just a few minutes ago that I'm sure you know, but I want to ask you just in the stillness of wherever you are, would you sing that little chorus and just make the manger that you're in right now an altar a tabernacle and worship the Lord as we sing Christmas.